good morning intro. Right now I'm going to walk you through the car class exercise. The best way to use this video for help is to skip around because I will be going through almost all of the exercise. So you can follow along with me from beginning to end or you can scrub through and get um, you know to wherever you uh, wherever you're having your problem. All right, let's get to it. So right now I'm going to make two new classes. So you can make a new Java project if you want. I'm just making them in my folder called classes. So I'm gonna make a class called car. And I'm also going to make a class called car test. Car test will contain my main method. So I'll just check there for main. Great. So realigning my brackets, getting ready to go here. In this class car, I know immediately that we are going to have fields or data, followed by our constructor, and then finally our methods. So I'm just going to go back to that description and check this out. So we have a string for the make. So that's like the model of the car. Make and model would be something like Toyota Camry or something like that. The color of the car and its odometer reading. I'm gonna grab these three. Let's see, I might be able to just pop them in here. All right, nice. So here is my make, my color, and my odometer reading. And of course, those are all private, private, private. Now our constructor is gonna put those together into a public object. And what is that object gonna be? It's gonna be a car. So it's gonna be a public car. We're gonna pass in three pieces of information for the make, color, and odometer reading, and then assign them in our constructor. So eventually we're going to pass those in. So that means that in main, when we create a car, it'll look something like this. It's going to be like car, you know, blick car is equal to new car, and then we'll pass in three pieces of information. So this could be like, um, you know, Mercedes G wagon black. And uh, how many miles do I have on it? 100,000. There you go. So if that's how we're declaring it, then we know that we'll be passing in these pieces of information in this order. And so you would pass in string um, for the make of the car. You could say something like make in string color in and int. I'm just going to call it odo in for odometer in. And then I'll assign them all here. Make in color in and odo in. So that gets rid of all my errors, which makes me feel pretty good. Now I'm going to drop this comment over in my main method just as a reminder to myself so I can remember how I construct it. I'm going to write a note to myself. This is how to declare a new car. Cool. What else should we be doing in here? So we've got four methods. Again, I'm just going to copy these pop them in to my class. So of course it's errors galore, but we'll figure that out. Now it is always helpful to separate these methods in your mind between getters and setters. So for example here, I'm going to say, instead of just methods, I'm going to first say getter methods. So get make, definitely a getter method. All it is doing is returning the make of the car. And so that should be fairly easy. All we have to send back is the make. So we would say return make. And the same will be true for get color. All we're going to say is return color might seem a little counterintuitive because of how simple it is, but this is the power of a class. 
using a class, it's very, very simple for us to create fields and then return them anytime we need them. Get odometer reading should be essentially the same thing. Return odometer reading. Now add miles, definitely not a getter method. This is not a getter method. This would be a setter method because it is setting the value of a, uh, a field within the class. So here, into additional miles is a number of miles to add on to the existing number of miles on the odometer reading. So for example, if my odometer reading as was earlier, I was 100,000, and here we passed in something like uh, 100, then that would mean that our new odometer reading would be 100,000 and 100. So with that in mind, it would be fairly simple for us to simply say that odometer reading has increased by additional miles. Now, there is an issue with this solution that we just created. There's definitely an issue with this solution. And the issue here is that what if uh, additional miles was negative. So this is a little uh, this is a little challenge for you to figure out. And I'll leave this one up to you. But it would be really nice if this method prevented us from adding negative miles. Because if I pass a negative 100, my method shouldn't reduce, it should not reduce that down to 99,900 miles on my Mercedes G-Wagon. It just shouldn't do that but it is up to you to figure out how to solve that problem. Finally, public void display. So here we want to display all the details about the car. Displaying, of course, means that we're going to be printing out the information, and that's something I know you know how to do, so I will leave this one up to you. Car test has no data, of course, because it has a main method. And here are our two methods, a main method and a method called more miles, which takes in two cars as an input and returns the car, returns the car with more miles. So that's really cool. Look at this public static car. We're using int and void and string, but now because we have a class called car, we can return a car. So let's drop that method in here public static car more miles takes in two cars returns a car so right now I'm just going to say return first car of course that should not necessarily be the case but if I say return a car I'm gonna get rid of those annoying red lines so my pseudocode here is going to be to check the mileage of the two cars if first car has more miles, then in that case, I would return first car. So I'll just put that there. And else, I'll want to return second car. Now that's an error right now because I have two, I have unreachable code because I always return this first, but we'll fix that in a second. So now we just have to see, uh, we just have to check the mileage on the first car. Well, lucky for us, we have a method to do that. We have get odometer reading that returns an int. So that means that if we say first car dot get odometer reading, this returns an int. So we could say something like int odo one is equal to first car dot get odometer reading. And the same can be true for an int for the odometer reading of the second car. Int odo2 equals second car dot get odometer reading. And now we can solve a very familiar problem to see if the first car has more miles, we would say if 
Odo 1 is greater than Odo 2. And that is the case in which we would want to return first car. Else, return second car. Now, a question you should be immediately asking yourself is, what if they have the same miles? And this is up to you. You can decide how to handle this, but you should put something like that in your block comment at the top. So in your block comment at the top, you're going to have your name, the date, and your description. And in your description, you should tell us all sorts of information, but you should also tell us what if the two cars have the same mileage. You can decide. You can return the first car always. You can return the second car always. That's what my code does right now. It's up to you. Just make sure that you are specific. All right, we're nearly done here. Our main is expected to do these steps. So again, going to drop them in here. I'm going to put some uh, block comments around this so it doesn't break everything. So here are the steps that we want to follow. I want to create two cars. We will see which car has more miles. I'm going to move this down. Display whichever car was returned, add miles to car one, call more miles again, and display whichever car was returned. So I'll do some of this, not all of it for you. Creating two cars, so here I'll split this up into individual steps for us. So first things first, we're going to create two car objects. Well, we just figured out how to do that. And that's how we, uh, because we saved this information right here. So I know that this can be our first car and I'll create a second car. This one I'll call maybe a sand and car. Sand and car is a new car. Instead, she will have a Ford Fiesta is going to be a uh, burnt Sienna, and it will have just a measly 20,000 miles on it. All right. You ever heard of that color, burnt Sienna? Okay. It's like, a, it's like an orangey brown. Let's just say orange. <laughs> okay. So we're going to call more miles between these two cars. And it returns a car. So if we just said more miles and called it on our two cars, Blick car, Sandin car, we're going to have an error. Yeah, I'll move this down here. It's not a build error because we don't see any red lines. It's not a lot, but it is a logic error because this is returning a car. So we need to catch that in a car bucket. So we need to catch it in a car and I'm gonna call that car more, uh, let's say, say car, car with more miles is equal to more miles, but car, same car. So now this box called car with more miles holds the car with the most mile. Then we call display for whichever car was returned. So we could say car with more miles dot display. I didn't write that code, but you did, so it should work. We'll add miles for car one. So car one was blick car. So we'll add miles. We'll say blick car dot add miles. The additional miles will be 100,000. 
And then we'll go through this process one more time. We'll call more miles and we'll display whichever car was returned. That is something we just did. I think you can do it yourself. So I'll leave it at this. Please reach out if you have any questions and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Best of luck, best of luck intro. See you later.